we're going to be discussing what I use for ELD for local last mile and container drage and what ELD provider I use for over the road because I separate both by DOT numbers and by ELD providers. Hey, transportation community, this is Luis Lopez, a.k.a. The Freight Guru. And today on episode 23, I want to talk about ELD and a cheat sheet on how to improve your daily operations with your drivers. If you're a trucking owner, dispatcher, operator, customer service rep, you're managing ELDs daily. There are a lot of ELD providers out there. I'm going to today talk about the ELD UI experience and the ELD machine that I'm currently using for over-the-road transportation as well as local last mile and container drage. Which one I picked for over-the-road, which one do I use for local last mile container drage, and why? Also, cheat sheet for you to use and to better improve your day-to-day. Specifically, going to give you some points to improve your driver mandates because if you aren't doing your ELD mandates, you are going to fail in transportation. It doesn't matter in this bullish market today if you're making money. Long run, if you're not meeting the safety requirements that the DOT has in place, you will go out of business. So we want to focus on meeting the 14-hour ELD mandate making sure your drivers are compliant, your dispatcher and safety compliance department is focused every day on doing warnings, driver deductions for not meeting ELD, what you're doing there, how you're doing it, and what that UI is like on, on, on that certain GPS tracking device and what I think is scalable, okay? So let's let's dig deep into... ELD and what exactly is this ELD electronic logbook? Okay, so HOS no longer the number one violation as per DOT. Hours of service violations were the principal reason for the ELD mandate, which required commercial drivers to keep record of duty status, to which paper logs to electronic logging device by December 2017. A driver should be familiar with HOS hours of service restrictions, but should also be able to rely on a good ELD system that alerts them before a violation occurs. So it's really important that the ELD device on the truck is alerting the driver before he becomes into a violation. Avoiding the violation can save a fleet time and money. So when you're picking an ELD device, make sure it's a device that's going to alert you on that violation. Knowing your driver ELD cycle. Driving cycles depend on how many days of the week your carrier operates. If your carrier cycle operates every day of the week, you are eligible to operate under the 70-hour, 8-day cycle, which limits a driver to a 70 on-duty hours over any 8-day period. If your carrier operates for fewer than 7 days in a week, then you are eligible to operate under the 60-hour, 7-day cycle, which limits a driver's to 60 on-duty hours over an any 7-day window. These limitations are based on a rolling or floating seven or eight day period. So as not to constrict you, your fleet to a Sunday through Saturday schedule that may not apply to your business needs. So you need to decide if you're going to be a 70 hour, eight day cycle or a 67 day cycle. Your restart your cycle. If you want to completely refresh your driving cycle, you must take a 34 
consecutive hour off duty. So you need to do a 34-hour reset. And yes, even if you have not worked the full 60 to 70 hour work week, you need to do that 34 hour reset in order to start your new cycle. The 14 hour rule, when a driver comes on duty after taking at least 10 consecutive hours off duty, he or she has a 14 hour window to complete driving for the day. Although driving is not permitted after the 14th hour, other work-related tasks may still be performed. Looking at the 11-hour rule, within the 14-hour driving window, you are allowed to drive a maximum of 11 hours. Those extra three hours account for all of the other work-related duties that are possible in a driver's workday, meaning waiting time, unloading, Contacting dispatch, having to go to the restroom, uh, getting lost, (laughs) having to put fuel. That's what that 14-hour window allows you to do. 14-hour drive time, 11-hour rule. Very important to understand that. So there's a 14-hour workday with an 11-hour rule. 30-minute Break. No driving is allowed after any eight hour on duty period until a driver has taken a mandatory 30 minute off duty break. The FMCSA does not enforce the 30 minute off duty break for any driver who qualifies for short haul operations. That's why we're going to be discussing what I use for ELD for local last mile and container drage and what ELD provider I use for over the road because I separate both by DOT numbers and by ELD providers. Uh, But when it comes down to specifically uh, FMCSA requirements, there is no mandate for local short haul. There is a mandate for OTR. Sleeper birth. Split sleeper berth. The sleeper berth extension allows drivers to extend their 14-hour window without taking the required 10 10 hours off duty by logging at least 8 hours but not more than 10 hours into the sleeper berth. A driver can effectively freeze the 14-hour clock. The split sleeper berth allows driver to split the required 10-hour off-duty break into two shifts. One of those shifts must be between 8 to 10 hours spent entirely in the sleeper. The second shift can be between 2 and 8 hours and completed in the sleeper berth, off-duty or as a combination of sleeper berth and off-duty. Regardless of the order in which a driver takes these breaks, successful completion of both will be will give the driver a new 11-hour drive time and 14-hour driving window, which begins after completion of the first qualifying break. This is all about safety, guys, and safety is going to be paramount for you to be able to qualify in the following years to come to grow your fleet and get your next year's insurance. It's crucial in order for you to scale your business. Remember, we are in a bullish trucking market right now. This is not going to last forever. And in order for us to scale in a bearish market, we need to have safety and compliance now when you can afford it. And by doing this now, you're going to fundamentally set yourself up for success because you are going to be able to build the foundation of a solid infrastructure that is going to allow you to grow your fleet in a way that you are going to be able to grow and scale that fleet in a market that it's not going to be as bullish as as it is today. I want to now show you what that ELD provider that I use for over the road is, what that UI, what what the user experience is, and how to navigate in that in that UI experience. So I personally think for over the road trucking, I think 
that the best ELD provider for over-the-road trucking is Keep Trucking. I think they do the best job of being able to onboard back office staff, which means customer service reps, dispatchers, managers, compliance people, bring them on board and with an easy and web-based training, get them to utilize the login and get them to operate the system with ease. So I want to show you what that looks like. So we're going to log in to keep trucking. Okay. First thing you're going to see is a fleet view and keep trucking. You're going to see a map and you're going to be able to, on the left-hand side of your map, you're going to see a fleet view. You're going to see compliance. You're going to see safety. You're going to see fuel, maintenance, messaging, documents, and admin. Uh, we're going to go into fleet view. And in fleet view, you're going to see all your drivers, okay? And you're going to see on the top, the map, vehicles, drivers, and assets. Keep trucking breaks down your drivers and assets separately into different pages. It's not all together. So you can assign your drivers to an assets and you can separate drivers into assets. And what I like about keep trucking and the biggest reason why for over the road transportation, I think keep trucking is the best for over the road scalability is that you can go to any loves or flying J and you can find a keep trucking device. So if you have a broken down truck and you need a subunit and you, or you need to rent a subunit from Ryder Penske, very easy to buy a keep trucking unit at any loves flying J and plug and play into the dash of, of a, of a rental unit. Can't say that for any other ELD provider out there. Uh, the other thing that I really like about it is the search capability. So if you wanted to type any, any of your driver's names, you automatically get, you know, all your driver uh, names in there. It's very easy. You can, it, it searches, searches, you know, very quickly. Um, the, the tracking is spot on. Gives, gives you very good telematics. So, you know, speed, fuel. This driver has 16% of fuel left, 78% def. Okay. It's got currently four default codes codes on, on, uh, on the truck. So it's got four tire pressure codes. So if you are a fleet, mid-sized to large fleet, and you have a safety department, your safety department can be spot on managing managing your new trucks um they do a very very good job and they can also uh integrate with your dash cams which is great uh gives you engine hours odometer uh gives you gives you all the bells and whistles i think i think the 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 actual dashboard and the the user interface is exceptional um it it does a very good job of giving you the the dash cam and what I really like about Keep Trucking is their API integration. Uh, you know, we've talked about this before about Truck Hub, which is our TMS platform. Truck Hub is a TMS platform that integrates three modes of domestic transportation, last mile delivery, container drainage, and over the road transportation. Truck Hub integrates automatically with Keep Trucking through a, a, via an API. So we're able to right now via Truck Hub API through Keep Trucking, get the ELD hours for over the road division directly into the Truck Hub TMS platform, which eliminates the need to get our driver hours via Keep Trucking, which a lot of ELD providers do not have that API documentation. So for over the road, non-short haul, Highly recommend Keep Trucking API documentation, readily available online. Very good API documentation available online. And if you do not need that API documentation, they do a very good job of a user experience that is solid, spot on, and very easy to use. On the compliance side, you're going to see uh, start to finish very easy 
uh, overview of your total logs. You're going to have your compliant logs, a percentage of compliant logs, non-compliant logs, uh, identified or an, uh, annotated unidentified logs, and number of inspections, defects r- resolved, defect status is unknown, and then uh, hours of service violations. So everything is here. Your logs are here for your dispatcher or your compliance manager to look at. And you're able to either search all drivers or a specific driver, look at all their logs, find any errors in their logs, and then immediately resolve those errors on all your trip logs in a very quick matter of time. Now, what are you guys doing when there are safety violations on logs? And that's the most important thing to discuss and have corrective action for logs, log violations. And by doing so, you're going to set yourself up for hours of service uh, reduction in in, in a short, short matter of time as you can see here. So when you look at your, like here, your July 16th to the 23rd, your your violations, you can see shipping docs and signature violations. Now these are minor, minor violations that can be readily corrected. The first thing you need to do on ELD mandated hours of service violations, figure out the level of severity of that violation. Does it require attention where requires uh, a driver to be uh, with corrective action that, you know, fine, uh, a warning letter, uh, immediate termination. You have to make immediate to corrective action with upper management or manager or compliance manager within a reasonable amount of time. These cannot drag on for 30, 45 days. Cannot. Because what happens... In, in hours of service violations um, is that by by letting these go and and letting them drag for 15, 20, 25 days, they start building up to where you will lose control. So what I recommend is coming up with a simple and scalable daily process. Pick 35 to 45 minutes a day where you will go into your compliance portal whatever ELD uh, portal you're using and spend 35, 45 minutes going in there, find your violations, figure out the severity of those violations. And once you have figured out the severity of those violations, then figure out if they need written termination or a fine to the driver. And by doing that, you're going to put the driver on notice and you're going to verbally or via communication of phone, email, let the driver know immediately the severity of why the safety of the company and of the job that he or she is performing is paramount to the success of the company. Okay. So this is crucial in the success of your company and the scalability of your company, doesn't matter the rate per mile, doesn't matter, you know, how great your revenue is this week. If you are profitable right now, which I'm sure you are, trucking market's great, you got to invest the time and resources now to make safety your number one priority. Now, want to move on to short haul or last mile delivery ELD. I want to look at for a minute GPS Insight That's what I like to use for our local last mile. Main reason why is because, A, I think that they are very cost-effective, and I think that for for scalability with older equipment, they do a very good job. GPS has great communication, great customer service. Um, They're great with older equipment. Uh, They do a great job of being able to have multi-tenant use where you're able to put multiple companies within one uh, uh, portal, uh, which is great. Uh, the other thing about about GPS Insight, 
Uh, they have great ways of reporting uh, fuel utilization and and uh, driver driver idle time. Uh, not not my favorite for when it comes down to hours of service, uh, but really really good when it comes down to uh, getting getting the units and devices onto the trucks, especially older trucks, and hardwiring them into the cabs, which is from in my opinion really important on for local last mile where you don't want to just put them on the dash where they're easily accessible and able to be uh, removed like the newer, more modern uh, keep trucking devices. So I use GPS Insight for our local trucks. Uh, they're hardwired. You can't even see them. They're, they're put inside uh, under, under either the uh, driver's seat or, or under the steering wheel mounted into the steering wheel wheel where where you literally cannot see them um and i i do like their their uh their 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 different uh, multi-tenant usage uh and the ability to put uh, multiple uh dot numbers all in one portal uh i also like uh they're able to put multiple landmarks and uh and automate all those landmarks so you get automatic emails uh depending on on, on where, where these certain trucks are landing on a daily basis, which is great. Um, there's a lot of options out there for, for ELDs and not every company is, is, uh, gonna, gonna agree on either keep trucking your GPS insight. I just want to bring to the forefront, uh, a couple uh, of providers that, that I've screened and we've tried, we've tried in, in 10 years, we've tried a lot of different GPS, uh, tracking, uh, devices and, and uh, for me, the, the three major components to picking the proper uh, GPS uh, uh, tracking uh, company are API integration for us is one, uh, good communication and customer service, and, and cost. Uh, cost is important. Uh, those are the three things we've looked at. And these are two reliable companies that, that we have a relationship and we feel like has done a good job. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode on on a, a quick cheat sheet, how to use and properly identify uh, the process of the ELD mandate, as well as look at the UI user experience of, of ELD. Uh, this is a revolving door. Things are changing in the industry today. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Please subscribe to the link below. Let me know if you have any questions. And stay tuned for future episodes. This is a Freight Guru here signing out. Take care, guys.